Okay, Mike. Oh, come on. Hey, hey, come on. Hey, hey, let's go. Timmy, it's okay. It's my turn now, Mike. I want to bat. You can't play baseball. You're too little. I can't so play baseball. I can hit further than Mickey Mantle. Pow! Pow! Yeah, well, we're finished anyhow, Timmy. We're going swimming. I'm going with you. I said I can go swimming too. She did not. That's just another one of your fibs. She did, Mike. It's the truth. She said I can go for a whole week. What did I ever do to deserve such a fibber for a kid brother? Why can't he go with us? Because he can't swim. Some other time, Timmy. Come, boy. But I want to come with you. Well, you can't. So go on home. Go on. I don't know if this is such a good idea. It's pretty cold to me. Let's try it, eh? It's freezing! You city kids, look, I'll show you how warm it is. <laughs> I got an idea. Let's go over to Red Creek and watch the breaking and the horses. Great idea. Come on, let's go. Well, it's only a car. Come on, I'm getting hungry. Yeah, but what would a car be doing on that road? It's only a roundabout route to the highway. Did anyone see the driver? Mm -mm. Well, he didn't see us either, so we're even.
sister? I want some turkey bits. Were you watching me all this time? You were, weren't you? I didn't see nothing. Are you sure? I was swimming all by myself. Well, off you go now. There's a good boy. I, uh, I, I just came here to relax and read a book. Look, here you are. Here's a dime for you. You go get yourself an ice cream or something. A, a quarter? Gee, thanks. What book are you going to read, mister? A book? Well, I... Look, I, I give you a quarter, so... Off you go now. Go on. Go on. Come on, out you get. I want to come with you. Are you crazy? You can't go off with a perfect stranger. Now go on, go on home. But I don't know where I am. Oh, no. Oh. All right, where do you live? Goose Lake. Goose Lake? Miles out of my way. All right, come on. Come on, get in. Hurry. I think you're a darn nuisance. That's what I think. Your mother's just coming up, Mike. She has bad news. What is it, Mom? I suppose it was too much trouble for you to look after your little brother, now, wasn't it? As if I hadn't enough to do looking after the four of you. What's the matter, Mom? Nobody's seen Timmy since we left him here this morning. What? He told me you were taking him swimming. You know, I should have known it was one of his fibs. All the same, Mike, why didn't you take him with you? Don't worry, Mrs. Forbes. I'll get in touch with my brother. Poor little thing. This is XNY 556A Apple calling XNY 556. Come in, please. What can have happened to him? Oh, hi, George. It's about Timmy Forbes. We left him at the fort some time ago. He was supposed to go home, but... I'll come all the delay and get... Well, never mind that now. Look, Pete, you stand by at the fort. I'll get onto it right away. What's your name? Dave Forsyth. Look, how far is this town of yours, anyway? Well, not too far. Where do you work? Bank, if it's any of your business. Look, kid, are you quite sure you live at... What's it called? Simon's Lake. Are you the boss? The boss of what? Oh, of the bank, yeah. I, I guess I am Well, the managers of the... Wait a minute, Simon's Lake, but you said Goose Lake, and don't you deny it. Uh-huh. Oh, you little monkey. Heard anything? Nope. Search parties haven't found me yet. Well, there's no sign of them anywhere. We can't just sit around here. We've got to do something. Oh, get out of the way, Topper. Well, if only Joe Two Rivers hadn't been away, he could have done something. Well, we're supposed to be ranger kids. We ought to know what to do. You're right, Chubb. Joe would have tracked Timmy. Hey, what are we waiting for? We got Topper. Yeah, but we've got to find something Timmy was wearing. There's an old T-shirt of his in the stable. Well, come on, then. Gee, 
Ти е с нос. Сервези. Е, бой. Добре. Е, бой. Simon's Lake, Musky Lake. Now where am I? Now I'm lost. And it's all your fault. Now come on, kid, where do you live? I want to go home. I want to get out of this area. Because of that tin box you were burying? So you were watching all the time. I'll just have to go back for the money now. How much money was there in the box? Never mind that now. Come on, but let's But they might catch you. Why? They'll be looking all over the place for me. How long have you been away from home? Since breakfast. What? It's nearly two o'clock. It's true, they will be searching for you. Now I can't go back. I can't even take you home. It looks as if you're stuck with me, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, George. We've looked everywhere, but there's still no sign of Timmy. Well, stay where you are for the time being, Pete, and we'll send some men along. Out. What's the matter with Topper? Gabby, get the shoe, quick. Here. Topper, Topper. Topper's still following the scent, but he's going away from the river. Then Timmy must have left here. He's all right. Come on. The trail can't possibly end here. Look. Tire marks. But if this is as far as Timmy came, he must have left in the car. I wonder if he was in that car that we saw. I bet he was. You got the license number, didn't you? Yeah, 234-269. That's it. So it. Must be hours since Timmy left in the car. The thing I don't get is why wouldn't a man take him straight home? You don't suppose he's been kidnapped? That's crazy. Why would any guy want to kidnap Timmy? This is XNY-556-A, Apple calling XNY-556. Come in, please. You mustn't worry, Mrs. Forbes. Now that we have this license number, we'll soon find this man. It's quite possible it's somebody Timmy knows from around here. We have roadblocks up for hundreds of square miles, Mrs. Forbes. He won't get out of the area. But do you think for a moment this man is going to use his own car? It's bound to be stolen. And when you do find him, it's going to be too late. Come on, Mrs. Forbes, I'll drive you home. We'll let you know as soon as we hear anything definite. Poor little thing, he's going to be terrified out of his wits. Thirsty and starving. <laughs> oh, what on earth am I going to do with you? It's a difficult problem, isn't it? All the lousy luck. All these months of planning and you have to turn up. Well, do you have to do that? Eat ice cream and chocolate bars and potato chips all at the same time? Look, here. Use this. Oh, for heaven's sake. Ugh. When I know something now, I know why I never got married. Did you... Rub the money from the bank? It was foolproof. Check the money after the manager goes on leave, hide it, and go back to the bank to work for another week to cover up all the traces. 
It would have taken some doing working in my own bank after robbing it of $180,000. But I'd have managed all right. I robbed a whole train once. Then when the manager came back, I'd be going on my vacation. They wouldn't suspect anything until I failed to come back. I dug up all the railroad tracks. Then the train fell over, then I shot everybody. It would have given me three weeks start. Then I robbed the train. Bang! Pow! Then I buried the money. Must... Must think what to do. Can't go back. I can't take you home. I can't take you with me. Anyway, there's only one thing I can do. Find out who owned that car. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's not much good, I'm afraid. It belongs to a pretty respectable citizen by the name of Dave Forsyth over at Redcliffe. And he's certainly not the kind of guy to get involved in anything like this. Then the car must have been stolen. Yeah, I'm afraid so, but I can't locate Forsyth to check with him. Couldn't we drive over to Redcliffe and find this Mr. Forsyth? He might be able to tell us something useful. Well, it seems a bit strange that nobody could locate him in a small place like Redcliffe. Well, what are we waiting for then? Come on! But, Mike, it's 60 miles away. Oh, please, Sergeant Scott. Yeah, come on, Sergeant. This Mr. Forsyth may be able to tell us who took the car. Oh, now, look. It's better than waiting here doing nothing. Come on, Sergeant. Look, if you get any calls, you can have them passed on to you. Here. All right, let's go. I'm going to tell the police about you. But I haven't done nothing. No, no, no. I'm going to tell them where they can find you. But I want to go with you. Well, you can't, and that's final. Now look, don't you try hiding in the car again, you hear? Can't fool me twice. Scott, over. We've just had an anonymous call that the missing boy, Timmy Forbes, has been left at a cafe called the Chuck Wagon near Juniper Corners. Over. Right. We're not far from there now. We're on our way. Over and out. Ignition key. Left it in the ignition, I'm sure. I know where it is. Quick, Timmy, where is it? I'll tell you if you take me with you. I can't. Now, please tell me where it is. The police will be here any minute. I'll tell you if you take no, me. No, I can't. I can't. Now, haven't you caused me enough trouble already? All right, come on, get in, get in. But tell me where it is. Here it is. Give it to me. unscrupulous person I've ever met. Why? That's what I don't get. Why are you doing this to me? We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. The police are asking everyone within the radius of this station to be on the lookout for a cream sedan, license number 234269. It is believed to contain the boy, Timothy Forbes, who, as we reported earlier, has been kidnapped from the Indian River District. We repeat the description. A kidnapped? I haven't kidnapped you. That's not right to say that. You're going to crash into those trees, Mr. Forsyth. Now, see what you got me into. It's kidnapping now. 
That's it, Timmy. You've had your fun, but this is the end of the line for me. Only thing left is to get out of the country. Now, look, you stay in the car. The police won't be long. I'll follow you. I'll run after you. Yes, I believe you would. Now, I see what it is now. You, you had a feeling of power over me. No. Honest, Uncle Dave, I like you. No, Timmy, if you liked me, you would have helped. It doesn't matter now. If you won't stay in the car, I'll just have to wait until the police arrive. All right. I'll stay here. It doesn't matter anyway. I've already ruined my life now. No. You go, Uncle Dave. I promise I'll stay here. You're a nice little boy to me, in spite of everything. I wish... description of the man who took you. Oh, sure. Go on. He had a red beard, and yeah. he had big staring eyes, and he was mad. Yeah, go on. He was oh, about nine feet tall, and he had green pants. Nine feet. Nine feet tall. Red beard, green pants? Timmy, you mean the man in the red beard. It's his trousers that were green. You see, it's just another one of his crazy stories, Sergeant Scott. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But after all, there has to be some reason for the queer way this fellow Forsyth acted. Have, have you found him yet, Sergeant? I'm expecting to hear any minute now. Well, if I hadn't made up my mind never to let Timmy out of my sight, you wouldn't have got me traipsing all this way on one of his fibs. Mrs. Forbes, I don't think it was another one of Timmy's stories. I think he was really trying to help that man. Look at him. He's forgotten all about the treasure. All right, Timmy. Where's it supposed to be? It's right beside Pete. And what is it, diamonds and pearls and pieces of eight? Hey, Sarge. Look. Do you like that? He was telling the truth after all. How am I going to trust him at all again? <laughs> <laughs> 